Ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, cats, dogs, welcome. This is Jean Emmanuel Lepra's World Championship winning Esper Legends deck. The Worlds uh, has just concluded this prior weekend. Jean Emmanuel took it down with Esper Legends. This is a deck that's been up and down, like tier one, tier two for, for a year or so, and then finally kind of cemented its place as one of the all time decks this weekend. Or it's past weekend anyway. If you're seeing this deck for the first time, it looks weird. I understand. So let's quickly go through. There's a lot of like small synergies and then a kind of over overarching plan that we'll, we'll go through quickly. So what is the point of the deck? Well, the point of the deck is to play tons of creatures. Now, why, why would you want to play tons of creatures if you, especially in best of three, which is where uh, this deck was getting played, tons of creatures can sometimes be a liability because one, it's easy to sideboard against, you become weak against like board wipes, that type of thing, you become weak against cut downs, for example, go for the throats, these type of things. But Esper Legends does have a huge set of benefits from playing tons of creatures. One is Plaza of Heroes. So this, one, makes your creatures easy to cast because your mana is incredible. And two, you can use it to protect the creatures that you've got in play with Hexproof and Indestructible. Two are the other legendary lands, Iganjo, Otawara, Takinuma. So these all get discounted by number of legendary creatures that you have in play at the time, the channel abilities, and you'll see that we're playing multiple copies of each of them, which is a little bit unusual, but it makes sense in this deck because you want to use the channel ability so much more often than most other decks would want to. Also, you've got Rafin, which can cycle through your deck and you can get rid of extra copies that you don't need, and the main benefit to all of this is that you can use these spells as sorry you can use these lands as pseudo spells so you don't need to play as much removal or as much counters you can see that jean emmanuel here only has one make disappear and three go for the throat in the main deck which is a little bit low for for a best of three deck normally now you do also have two air tie resurrected which is a legendary creature which can fill the role of either a counter spell or a removal spell but generally you would you could actually add these lands to the number of removal spells that you have. So in this case, when, once you add the Iganjos and the Otawaras to the Go for the Throats and the Air Ties, you'll see that now all of a sudden the amount of removal spells that you have seems to look a bit more normal, let's say. So that's the role that they're they're trying to fill there. Uh, other things that we can do, you've got Skrelv to protect your creatures, you've got Thalia to tax your opponent's non-creatures, now and your own I suppose, but you don't have that many. Uh, one important thing to note is that with the Thalia tax, it does not affect your legendary lands, so you will be able to pay the price that you will have uh, due to the number of legendary creatures that you have in play. Rona gets massive benefits from playing a lot of legendary spells, in this case it's all creatures. Fairy Mastermind has, whenever an opponent draws their second card each turn, you draw a card. That is a nice little combo with Shieldred, for example. Denik provides incidental graveyard hate in the main deck, so cards like Graveyard Trespasser, uh, they won't be able to target. If you're playing against a deck that's trying to reanimate a Traxxer or something like this, they won't be able to do that while, while Denik is in play. Now that's that means that then it's good against the slower decks, right? The the more mid rangey or the ramp decks, that kind of thing. But he's also really good against aggro because it is a two three life linker that leaves behind another creature. It's very difficult for mono red, for example, to get through a life linker and then the Denic Pious apparition afterwards too. And remember, you you've only spent one card there. They've they've probably spent two at best, most likely three. Lord Skitter Sewer King is a new card from Wilds of Eldraine. Whenever another rat enters the battlefield under your control, exile up to one target card from an opponent's graveyard. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token with this creature camp block. This gives you a little bit of incidental graveyard hate main deck, which can be useful. And also it is a token factory, which is very good with Rafine Scheme and Seer. <coughs> uh, you're just, you're just going to sit back with Lord Skitter, make some rats, and then at some point you're going to attack in with your Rafine, you're going to get lots of Rafine connive triggers, and you're going to pump up one of these creatures for a big attack. 
Shieldred the Apocalypse, four copies. Now, I'm assuming that most people know what Shieldred is right now. If you don't know what Shieldred is or what Shieldred does, then I'm sorry to say I'm not going to be the person to break it to you today. Ertai Resurrected. I have become more and more of a fan of this card as time goes by, especially in decks like this. It really helps to really helps to cover the hole that you leave by by cutting and skimping down on the on the cards like make disappear go for the throat these type of things it's just a it just fills the hole in the in the deck so well now the opponent does get to draw a card when you use their tie but thankfully that can be leveraged in your favor a little bit with cards like shieldred and and fairy mastermind uh, sometimes you won't be able to do that but that's okay air tie will win you a lot of games and in the sideboard, we have lots of cutdowns for the aggressive decks. Disdainful Stroke, you should be using that against the ramp most of the time. Negate for control decks. Weather announcement for slow, kind of grindy decks. For decks like Golgari, decks like uh, Green Black, decks like other Esper decks, which is red, no, sorry, blue, white, black. So you'll, you'll notice two main differences between Esper decks uh, that people play. This creature-heavy Esper Legends decks with lots of plazas, lots of legendary lands, and then there's another type of Esper deck that would play these wedding announcements in the main deck, and it's a bit more more go for the throats, more make this appears, more wedding announcements, these type of cards. Maybe more Wandering Emperors. They are... Kinda similar those two decks, but they do have huge, huge differences. So yeah, congratulations to John Emanuel for, for winning Worlds with Esper Legends. We're gonna take it to the Mythic Ladder, see how it performs. I'm uh, like rank 50 or something right now, so we should get some high level opponents and we'll see how this can stack up. Let's give it a go. All right, match one here. On the draw game one, we have two lands, no blue. We do have Thalia though. We do have multiple Thalias, which is nice. I think I'll keep this. So we can play Thalia on turn two. Hopefully we can get Rafine down on turn three. And then either we can just use the second Thalia if the first one gets removed. Or we can cycle away with Rafine. That's one of the benefits of this. Oh, is it straight into a mirror? Okay. That's a little bit sad because... <clears throat> of course we know that Thalia is doesn't really affect our own deck too much with attacks, so therefore it's not going to affect the opponent's deck either. Okay, so they have a incredibly strong start. I will, we will need a blue even to maintain parity here. If we don't draw a blue land, I think we're dead. Okay, we didn't draw a blue. Well. <laughs> uh... Yeah, that's why the deck won worlds. If you, if you play Rafine and they don't answer it immediately, you are dead. I, I was hoping, you know, I was kind of hoping for it to be us that did that, but if it's going to be the opponent doing it against us, I guess, I guess that also shows the power of the deck in another way. So how to sideboard the mirror, huh? Well, I think we just bring in, cut down, take out, take out Thalia. I think it's that simple. AO can be okay. But, no. Skrelv, despite opponent not having a huge amount of removal in their deck, they are going to have more, because they're probably going to bring in their cutdowns too. So they're going to have more after sideboard, so the Skrelv will be better anyway. But also the Skrelv is nice just for forcing through attacks, especially when you're playing cards like, like Rafine, right? Where... <clears throat> Getting in for an extra attack can make all the difference because you get to cycle through a bit more of your deck and make your next play even better too. <laughs> so this hand is better. We've got Skrelv into Denik. <clears throat> we have a removal spell for their... F Maybe not their first creature, but you know. We do need to hit the lands again. 27 land the deck this one is. Come on, baby. They they did keep in Thalia, which is interesting. I think a mistake, but 
Well, <laughs> I see a mistake. It's going to work out for them in this game. So hopefully they don't have their fiend again. It looks like they don't. Thalia attacks, of course, because they can't block the Benic anyway. Okay, we do draw a land and we do have go for the throat available. We need one more for Ertai and Shieldred. Okay. Benic life gain making a huge difference already here. Let's hold off on the go for the throat in case they play play shielded or something like that. I think if we go for go for the throat now. <clears throat> on the fairy mast, I mean not the Thalia. If we do it on the Thalia, they can protect it with Plaza, and we don't even really need to kill Thalia anyway. There's our own fairy mastermind, okay. Would have preferred a land, but <laughs> creature's not bad. Why would they go for air type? Let's see what they choose. They choose to kill the Skrells. That's fine. I could activate the Skrells here and allow my Denik to push through, but I don't mind the trade. Let's go with our Shieldred. Shieldred is nice if they try and go for a Rufin. Go for the throat on Shieldred is okay. I mean, they, they tax their own spell there, right? So, we've got choices here. Got choices here. Let's go Skrelv. We can hold up cut down and pay the ward on a Rafine. If they play one. If not, we'll go for Fairy Mastermind. It's pretty good to get this Skrelv down before we play our next Shielded. They go Denik, okay. Think we go Fairy Mastermind. Go Shieldred. And this time we've got Skrelv available to protect her. And we have three removal spells in hand, which is pretty good. We've got Benic Pious Apprentice, which is very nice too. We'd love to get the Denic Pious Apprentice down before we use these removal spells, because then we're able to make clue tokens when the, the, those creatures do die. It's just a little bit slow to play the Denic, but I think we are... I think we are okay here to do it, though. Still on 14. They don't really have any attacks other than just trading the Shieldreds. Which... Wouldn't be too bad, but because of the plaza we won't be able to block. I think we have to go for... We have to wait until we can hold up our mana to go for the block, right? We'll block... If, if they do attack with Shieldred next turn, we'll be able to block with our Shieldred. They will crack their plaza, and then in response, we'll use our Ertai and, and kill their Shieldred. <laughs> and I think that is our plan for next turn. So here we'll just get in with our flyers. And this is looking good. I think. Yep, opponent agrees. All right, we go to game three. First game was a little scuffed, but we played it out there, and that was that was a bit better. <laughs> On the draw, don't think anything really changes. I think we're we just stick with the same thing. 
I do think opponents should take the failures out. I mean, yes, we had two cut downs and it was taxing those two cut downs, but I, th I, th I just feel it's much better to be the person with the cut down here than it is to be the person with the failure that's taxing the cut downs. Let's see what opponent does. A bit slow there, so it, f it feels like they did change something. Okay, these, these cards are good, but this hand is way too slow. Better. Okay, so keep your plaza. Hakinuma is the best card here to draw later, so let's let's get rid of that. They do have Skrelv on the play, so I'm already a little scared. Okay, let's go Rona. We can start activating the Rona. If they do have a Fairy Master mind though, that can interact pretty well with a Rona. If we activate it to draw a discard, they'll be able to draw an extra card. It did look like maybe they didn't have it though. You would expect them to have cast it there if they did have it. They do have Skitter though, okay. <clears throat> well, I'm glad we didn't keep that Takinuma because our whole graveyard would be gone. Okay, let's start activating the Rona. Remember, Rona does untap when you cast a legendary spell. So, we can get rid of a land. Then let's cast Ardenic, which will untap our Rona. <clears throat> and we can activate the Rona again, but this time on opponent's turn. No need to do it now because we've only got one mana left. There's only one card that we could cast there if we drew it, and that would be a Skrelf. Uh, everything else that we can do with only one mana involves the legendary lands, and those we can do on opponent's turn anyway. <laughs> okay, now Rafin is a little spooky. We do have Ottawara though, so we can target the opponent's creature when they do attack. Which I kinda want to do, but I also want to play Shieldred. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. I think we need to guarantee getting Shieldred down next turn. I can't afford to get rid of this land. It is quite likely that we draw another land because I do have one to three draws. But one, it is possible that we don't draw a land and get incredibly unlucky. And two, even if we do draw a land, it might involve actually discarding our air tie, which we don't want to do. Let's just get the shield down, just because it's such a high tax for them to make any attacks with this Rafine, especially with Skrelv in play to protect. Okay, well. <laughs> okay. okay. So here, definitely activate Rona, get rid of Skrelv. Hmm. I could have played the land first. And then played the, sh the Shieldred first, and I would have gained two life from that Rona activation. But I was hoping to draw a different land, right? So that I didn't have to put the Ottawara into play so I could use the channel ability. I think it's worth giving up the two life for that chance. So here, the rats cannot block. Only Rafine can block, so let's we can get in for another a free two life here with the Denic at least. And we'll pass. So a, a little awkward there, Rafine here for them. With us having Sheldred in play, and of course our Sheldred is very difficult to kill here. They can use Ottawara on it though, if they have their own copy. Where's our Ottawara? Here it is. Uh, this is a land, so it's effectively a colorless card essentially even though it's even though it looks blue uh, and Skrelv has to choose a color so Skrelv it's basically a long-winded way of telling you that Skrelv cannot protect Shieldred 
from an Ottawara. So let's hope they don't have it. We are getting to dig through their a lot of their deck though. Let's see what they get. Importantly, no life linker though, right? So you can see that despite us taking six damage here, opponent also took four damage themselves from their own attack there. And they have no blockers right now. Wed an announcement. They attack with two creatures, so this is going to draw another card. So they, they have one blocker, Denik. And they're going to 10 life. Okay. Let's draw with Rona. I'd like a way to get through this Denik. My Ertai cannot kill it because of the Skrelv. Okay. <clears throat> what have we got here? We have four, six, seven, eight. And then they would take another two at start of turn. So I think if we draw with Rona and hit an untapped land, get rid of Rafine, which is a little crazy. It should be lethal. Up down Skrelv. Yep. In response, Airtight, which untaps our Rona. Destroy the Denik. Oh no! Wait, what just happened? Didn't that. Please tell me this then, it's dying. Okay, it looked like I'd countered the cut down there. <laughs> Woo! Scared. <clears throat> okay, now. <clears throat> false alarm, false alarm. Got the job done there, got the job done. You can see how everything interacts together so well. Well, that was a pretty clean win there. First first match, let's go to the let's go to the next one. Okay, match two on the draw again. <laughs> two Denix. Now, it is a legendary creature, so we can't have both in play at the same time. But Denix is a creature that most the decks will use one of their removal spells on. So I think it's safe to keep a hand with two. I mean, even, even if they don't use a removal spell on Denix and we're stuck with a, stuck with the second one in hand... It does mean that the first one is just, you know, gaining two life a turn while attacking for two, so essentially a four life swing every turn. Now, this is a scary creature though. The Witch's Vanity. Wow, okay. Create a food, create a roll. Wicked roll token attached to target creature you control. Okay, that's a little spooky. So this is gonna this oath swarm's gonna be a four four on attacks and then the next turn it'll be a five five. Before attacks, so I actually have to pass here. I can't play any of my creatures because I need to kill this oath swarm with the the eye ganjo. See of the empire it'll be too big for that land on the following turn. We'll kill that now. There goes Shield Radiant. <clears throat> and I guess we're also going Shielded. More than happy just to make a block here and have both Shieldreds off the board. If opponent would do as a solid and allow that to happen. Beseech the Mirror. This is a new card from Wilds of Eldraine. 
or mana sorcery with bargain. Search your library for a card, exile it face down, then shuffle. If, if this spell was bargained, you may cast it. They did bargain, so they can cast it. They take the end. Thalia, huh? Thalia, Thalia, Thalia. <clears throat> well, we do want to have Ottawara available as a spell. Or as a spell, so to speak, anyway. So let's play two creatures out and pass. Looks like we're taking one more hit from this shield, though, which is going to put us relatively low on life, but we do have Denik to swing back. <laughs> It's getting a little scary here. Opponent uses their demolition field. Okay. Still got one white source, three black, three blue, plenty. Okay, that is a creature that does not stop our Benic from attacking, which is nice. So we'll go. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I think we want the clue tokens, huh? So let's play out Denik, which will decrease the channel cost of our Ottawara down to one. Tack it in with Denik, which we have to do because they have Shieldred in play. Because we want to use... The Ottawara, and then they will most likely, of course, just replay the Shieldred. So we do need at least three life. Let's use that. This creature has menace, we're gonna have to double block it. <clears throat> Still scary. <laughs> That was scary. <laughs> Not bad yet, though. There's an air tie just in time. Okay. <clears throat> well, I guess we're attacking with everything. Let's use the air tie. This is why air tie is so good. It covers both counter spell and removal spell. While also not getting taxed by Thalia. And all of a sudden, we're looking not so bad, aren't we? There's another shield. There's another Ottawara. Okay, just keep it going. <laughs> Takinuma, okay. They have Tenacious Underdog, which can blitz with haste. Need to keep that in mind. And because, because of our own Denik, we will not be able to exile it from their graveyard with our Lord Skitter. So I think I need to hold back two creatures, otherwise... Tenacious Underdog plus kill my creature would be a lethal for them, because I'm only going to three. Now, <laughs> if they just play Shieldred and I'm attacking like this, do I have enough damage to actually win next turn? They would go to seven. Then they would block one of my creatures, and I would have six, eight, ten. They would need two removal spells. Okay. Let's do it. So with either Shieldred or Tenacious Underdog, they need two removal spells to win. <laughs> and the mana to cast them, right? With through Athalia, which is not easy. Sleeper, does that change anything? 
three in the air, we need to do four. Looks like we can do four. Let's see. We've got Plaza of Heroes here to protect one of our creatures that gets blocked. I guess let's uh, let's protect Lord Skitter. It's spewing out some tokens. I think they're dead either way though. Okay, that was a nice win. I mean, they, we were in <laughs> we were in deep trouble after the early game there. They had a nice start with the Oathsworn getting in for a bit of damage. Vanity killed our Denik, and then they went Shieldred into Beseech for the end to remove not only Shieldred, our Shieldred from the board, but all of our other Shieldreds from the deck, which is a little spooky when you're on three life. But we got there in the end. Okay, so this is a... You know, pr pretty... Not exactly normal, but pretty normal mono black deck. But against mono black, I think Eo is very nice. Because they have a lot of removal spells, and Eo is a creature that doesn't mind uh, being removed, because it leaves something behind on the board. Be it counters for your other creatures, or another permanent that it fetches. Surge of Salvation is also very nice against removal spells. Wedding Announcement is very nice against removal spells. I don't think we want Stroke or Negate. Even though they play Shieldred, even though they play... At uh, the end, even though they play Beseech the Mirror, the holding up the Disdainful Stroke will not be worth it because they fight for the board too much. It is worth it against decks like Ramp because most of the time they won't be doing too much, right? In the early game, they're too busy getting lands into play, etc, etc. Whereas Mon Black deck is still fighting on the way on the way up to these cards right they're still playing sleepers they're still playing underdogs they're still playing oath swarms probably trespassers lilianas etc etc you just can't afford to hold that to a mana that is a trap that a lot of people fall into uh for the same reason make disappear can go i think lord skitter will go down squelve is still really good here let's get rid of our masterminds one Rafine, one air tie. All right, nice hand. We've got Thalia to slow them down. If they don't kill Thalia, obviously they're getting taxed and that's okay. And if they do kill Thalia, we can drop the wedding announcement immediately after. <laughs> Evolved Sleeper is a little annoying for us because that is a that is a creature that they can just pump their mana into instead of killing Athalia. Yeah, like this. So that's a that's a bit annoying, but they go hopeless nightmare. So we have to discard a card and lose two life. Well, I guess it's worth an announcement. I mean, our Thalia is not dying here, and we do want to go Shieldred into Eo. That should be enough to win this game. We did draw a spell we can cast, which is nice. Sleeper looking very strong here. I can't block it because they can pump it up to a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, so in the last match I activated Rona first, but in this, before playing the Shieldred, but in this match I think we want to not to do that. <laughs> Second guessed myself a bit at the end there, but yes. My initial instincts were correct, I think. No way out. Discard to create the 2-2 two, two zombie. Okay. I really think we have to try and get this AO down. <laughs> so it's bo both the lands are going, I believe. A 
Let's see if they attack with their shielded. They do not. Okay, so we can we can activate the Rona. That feels bad. Could have used that next turn. Surely there'll be another one, right? Okay, Den Denik is actually a very good one to discard, so let's let's go activate it again and like hopefully see another land. We do, perfect. So we get value out of the Rona discard, we also get to get Ao down, we get to untap Rona again. <clears throat> An opponent is still getting taxed by Ithalia here. I would like to do something about this Evolved Sleeper though, because it is going to be able to start drawing cards for them soon. Of course, there's no downside to that for our opponent when both of us have a Shieldred in play. Here's the Siege. I guess they're just going to take the end again. There's not really any planeswalkers that they can take because they'll all just die to Ao. They can't really take another Shieldred. It is the end again, okay. And you can see it, see Ao there, pretty good, right? We didn't, but it does get exiled by the end, so we don't get the on death effect, but. It did essentially protect our Shieldred, right? Because opponent knows that they can't they can't take my Shieldred and leave the AO in play. So they're trying they're trying to get their underdog in the graveyard so that they can blitz it next turn. I sadly I just can't avoid taking the damage. Or I can't, uh... Did that, did that make sense, what I just said there? I, c I do not have the option to take the damage, is what I meant. So we, we did draw Skitter, which is nice. This will be able to get rid of that underdog. Let's go to combat. Make a rat, get rid of the underdog. We do still have a little bit of an evolved sleeper problem, though. Quite the evolved sleeper problem. I think we just we just hold it. We'll keep cycling through Rona and hopefully try and find a Rafine. Rafine will help make our creatures the biggest on the board, which will allow us to attack pretty well. Okay, yeah, so they pump up to 3-3, three, three, and now for 3 mana they can do plus 1, plus 1 counter and draw a card as, as many times as they like. It's a little, it's a little spooky. Another underdog, okay. Another Denik. Well, I definitely think we should take the free discard on the Denik here. We get a plaza. Hmm. Yeah. I should have played that other... I should have played the Denik Pious Apparition first. Because I would have made a clue token there, but... I was too greedy, man. I just wanted... I want this sleeper dead. <clears throat> and I was holding up the ability to... to there are the mana, essentially, to be able to remove it. Right, we continue to hold a bit of... bit of a stalemate here, but this... As I keep saying, the sleeper does give them a little bit of an edge. But we, we've also got Lord Skitter just making... a decent amount of tokens now. So they, they're going to have a little bit of card advantage, but hopefully our Denik Pious Apparition can keep up with that card advantage and our Lord Skitter can give us board advantage over the course. 
Okay, we did hit a creature there, which is nice. That'll give us a clue token. Draw. I ganjo. <laughs> Looking a little sus against their huge creatures here. Let's keep going. Airtai. <clears throat> Airtai is huge. We have to use it on the sleeper, I think, man. Which is good, it gives us another Denic Pious Apparition clue token. We get another rat. Still no Rafine yet, but... <clears throat> opponent is starting to feel, uh, well, feel is not what I meant to say, I meant to say find himself, but they feel too. <laughs> that they are very, very far behind now. I would be surprised if we can't close this out over the next turn or two. Lord Skitter putting in a good showing in this game too. Three mana we paid for that. We've got four creatures out of the deal and counting. If we do draw Rafine, we do need to be careful about it being our turn. Because opponent Shieldred triggers, causing us to take damage, or, or causing us to lose life, will happen before ours, our Shieldred triggers cause us to gain life. So, because we're on 12, we would need to only attack with 5 or less creatures. If we attack with 6, we will die at the start of combat. <clears throat> Let's discard the Thalia. We don't need a second one and it will give us a Denic clue token. And they did use the demolition field on one of our lands, so keeping the land drop is pretty good anyway. This is a tap land, so let's play the... I guess we can start by doing this first. Squelve is a creature we don't have yet, so we'll keep that. Let's go Squelve, untap our Rona. Play the land, hold up the Eye Ganjo. Make yet another rat. And I think they're still not dead yet. <clears throat> Oh god, this is a long one, huh? We are getting further and further ahead each turn, though. Slowly, but low progress is better than no progress. Opponent attacks, okay. Let's first strike the underdog. This is a menace creature and I don't really want to risk any of these. This this double block here is kind of the only reasonable one. I don't want to risk my Lord Skitter or my Shieldred. Let's take this double block. We'll see what they do. If nothing, we'll just let it go through. <clears throat> we do have Iganjo for the Oath Sworn if we need it, but... I don't mind the Ertai dying for the Oath Sworn. That's okay. They blitz the underdog, okay. Another Oath Sworn. Also okay. So we could have used Iganjo, we could have used our Plaza. Just unnecessary. That's a that's a good trade for us. We'll try and hold these for unfavorable trades. <laughs> Okay, so draw with the clue 
first. We want to we want to use our Rona activation, but because it's draw discard, you kind of want to have the discard part available with more options, right? So do your do your normal draw first. Here, let's get rid of tapped land. <laughs> Okay, so they have two blockers. The Might Token cannot block. We have three, four, eight, nine, ten attackers. So eight would be getting through. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, <clears throat> technically we have the lethal. But it would mean attacking with the Skrelf. So they would be able to use a removal spell, but so they would be able to use a removal spell to stop our lethal attack, but importantly, because of our two plazas, plaza of heroes that we have here, they would not be able to use a removal spell on a legendary creature, because I could protect them. So if they had, say I go for the throat, they would have had to use it on the rat token just to stay alive. So that's that's an easy attack with everything, right? And we take another win. Let's go one more and see if we can do the clean 3-0 uh, sweep. All right, match three on the play. Very nice hand. Thalia Rona Shieldred with a backup Shieldred. Beast. This is the type of hand that's just extremely difficult for any deck to deal with. Non-creatures are taxed. Card draw is taxed. We have looting as well with our own Rona. A lot of life gain if the Rona and Shieldred survive. We'll start off with Thalia though. Oh, it looks like they're playing Grixis. Haven't played against Grixis in a while. Yeah, play with fire. Okay. Interesting. And go Rona into Shieldred. Gotta go for the throat. At least we don't have to worry about Fable of the Mirror Breaker coming down. <laughs> That's nice. <clears throat> I think this is one of the first times I've played against Grixis since we we saw Fable go. But maybe it's not full Grixis though. Maybe they don't have blue. Might be a Rakdos. Might be a red black kind of Bernie deck. Looks like it with Kamano. <laughs> well, three Shieldreds should be pretty good against that deck if that's what they're playing. So I don't mind it. Let's go. I deploy Shieldred 1. Shieldred 1 might not get it done. Shieldred 2 probably will get it done. Shieldred 3 most certainly will. Almost certainly. I mean, so far, our opponent has kind of only played mono red cards. I wonder what the black and maybe blue is actually for. Do no blocks. Okay, okay. Two down. And we, we know that they've got a spell that will kill Shieldred if I block as well, so... <clears throat> I hope I didn't jinx myself. As soon as I saw that lightning strike, I thought, there's no way. There's no way. Three Shieldred cannot get this job done. Tark here. Okay. Let's see if they reveal a dragon. Because if they do, we might be able to block. Well, I still don't think I'm going to go for it. What a, a very interesting deck. They reveal two dragons. Oh my god. 
children nearly dead. Yeah, I think if they attack here, it means they've got monstrous rage in hand, right? Because that's, the, I think, the only way that they can deal the, the final three damage to Sheldred here. Well, <clears throat> we can attack, because even if they have monstrous rage now, uh, we can respond by using go for the throat on the commando. Go Denik for a little bit of life gain. And we will hold up the go for the throat. They have lightning strike. Okay, that's so that is the that's the card that they were gonna use on Shieldred if we did block the commando earlier when they attacked. They're in big trouble now. They do have Dragon Engine, which is a 2-2 double striker. And it is an artifact creature, so go for the throat. Not usable on that. But it doesn't quite kill Shieldred by itself, though. Damn, they had so much removal there. Two Warcraft and two Lightning Strike, two play with fire. Our third Shieldred just about stayed alive here. Just about. No need to use go for the throw on that creature because it's kind of a forced block anyway. And here we can just go scroll, hold up plaza and go for the throw. We can just hold up plaza for one turn to protect our shieldred and then after that, we won't really have to use the hold the plaza up anymore, so we can just play like Thalia, go for the throat, because at that point we'll then have the Skrelv to protect Shieldred itself. Okay, that was a nice win now. That was a very, very good hand for opponent. They... <laughs> you won't see red-based decks beating three Shieldreds too often, but... We could have lost that game. Let's try Surge. Let's try Cut Downs. Ale can be nice against red decks, especially this one here with their flying dragons, but Kamano is a little annoying against it, because if Kamano is in play, we Kamano is not really a creature that we want to use any of our removal spells on just because our creatures can block it so well so we don't want to kill it and of course they're not going to like attack into a creature that's going to die so their commando is actually going to stay in play a lot more often than you would expect just not attacking or blocking and that would mean that the AO does not get its death trigger so I think we actually should not play it now what do we want to get rid of here Rona seems a little suspect. 1-3 is just not very good against their their deck. Make this appear against essentially mono red is a little slow. And Airtie, there's not really any cards in their deck that are worth killing with Airtie when you consider the implication that they then get to draw another card, right? Airtie we want to be using to counter very big spells, not not small ones. Now you can make a case for the tempo advantage that like you get a 3-2 creature into play which could block a different creature, but <laughs> unless you can end the game immediately after using it, it is going to come back and bite you a little bit most of the time. So we can, our deck can kind of snowball out of the game against mono red based decks because of, of course we've got Shieldred. We're not going to draw three Shieldreds like we did in game one too often, but we do have other really effective things like Denik into Rufin. And then you just pump up your Denik, you just make a huge life linker, right? And you can quickly get out of range of cards like Play With Fire, cards like Lightning Strike. Bit more difficult to get out of range of the Nahiri's Warcraft than they had two copies of last game. But, you know, if they, if they end up using and the Hiri's Warcraft and on a Denik, you know, maybe, maybe that means your Denik's four toughness, five toughness, it's already attacked in as a big life linker, you've already gained the life, they're spending three mana on it, you've only spent two. You know, even if Denik dies in that situation, you're probably still ahead. 
Now, against most opponents, you don't want to keep a hand with three Thalias. But Mono Red will kill as many Thalias as you play, so it should be okay. So I think we can start with our Thalias here. And then hopefully drain them of... Okay, maybe the fourth one's a little too much, but we'll see. Hopefully we can drain them of their removal spells and burn spells, and then we can just drop a Denik and start gaining all the life back from the damage that they've dealt killing all the Thalias. What a basic plan. A 1 1 Shivan Devastator is not too scary. 1 2 Swift Spear into my first Striker. I will take that. Okay, well, I guess we're just deploying Adenic then, since they have not actually even killed the first Thalia. Okay, that opponent, I actually do need you to kill my Thalias. <laughs> because I've got four of them. So. Please? Please kill Thalia? <laughs> Colligan Warmonger. Reveal a dragon from the top six cards. It bricked. Let's just take a block. No need to get too fancy. Take a block, gain your life. You've got another Denic. You can play this Pious Apprentice Denic from the Graveyard, pretty good. That allows us to stop taking any damage from the Shivan Devastator for now at least. Bear in mind we are kind of playing here with... It looks to the opponent like we've got five cards in hand. Really we've got two. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Let's go Thalia Thenic again. We finally got a use for Thalia number two. Three and four, still rotten in our hand here a little bit. Okay, we're gonna get to use number three. Will we get to use number four? And you can see the Denic life gain adding up, right? Like we're already back to 16 here and all of the opponent's early aggression has just been neutralized, essentially. We are, in fact, going to get to make use of Thalia number four. Crazy. And now with Thalia number four, we've actually got enough mana that we can hold up the Plaza of Heroes now to protect it. Opponent down to 12 and we are all the way back to 18. Just Warmonger gets its ability upon attacking, so definitely let's kill it now. Don't want to don't want them to be able to draw some sort of huge dragon and get back in this game. And we take it down. Not bad. Somehow made use of all four Thalias, made use of both Denix. Not bad at all. We take the clean sweep. Alright. Let's take one last look at the deck and uh talk over the games all right so three zero not bad we played a range of different opponents there so you can see you saw the deck in action and i think those were fairly typical matches for for the deck like we've got a lot of very powerful creatures i mean your opponent has to remove basically all of them or they're in big trouble like the Denic life gain came in huge, our Rafine triggers were very useful, we made good use out of these uh, legendary lands, especially uh, Ottawara and Iganjo, or maybe not, not so much Iganjo, but Ottawara at least. Um, 
the plazas were, were effective. You saw them both helping us to, to cast our creatures in the first place. And we did uh, make some use out of the Hexproof and Indestructible activation too. Uh, Rafine was as good as it's been for a long time. It's always been a very powerful card. Um, we didn't get to take too much advantage of the Fairy Mastermind activation, but that was just opponent dependent. Like there will be, there will be some matches, especially against uh, kind of blue mid rangey decks where they're trying to hold up like their own flash creatures. They're trying to hold up their own removal spells, counter spells, card draw. That's when the Fairy Mastermind can take off a lot. Air tie was very effective. It's just a really good deck, which I mean, it shouldn't be too surprising since it just won worlds against other really good decks and really good players. So, yeah, if you're the store championships are coming up uh, this weekend, that would be the 30th of September or the weekend of the 30th of September and the following weekend, the weekend of the 7th of October. So those are those are coming back. Um, and if you're looking for a standard deck to play in that event, then, I mean, <laughs> this deck won the World Championships. What what higher praise can you give? Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time.